Hare Krishna. Today, on our Kartik Purikama, um, we're very blessed to come with a, a large group of devotees. Actually, our group has swelled to 350. Nothing like Radhana Swami's 8,000, but uh, <laughs> very nice devotees and uh, from 14 different countries. And we've come to the village of Karhala, which is the, um, the home of uh, Champakalata, one of the uh, Astasakis, one of the eight girlfriends of uh, Srimati Radharani. As we know, Srimati Radharani, she lives in Varshana with her family, but her close girlfriends, the eight uh, Sakis, their villages uh, are around Varshana. Like if you could look up at a bird's eye view, you'd see all the different eight villages of the, of the Sakis. And each of those Sakis also has eight very close friends. And they have eight friends, and they have eight friends. It's called Gopigana. These, there's millions and millions, actually, of different groups of gopis with different colors of dresses, different attitudes, different services. There's that saying that variety is the spice of life. And that's especially true in the pure uh, world of, of, of Vrindavan. So I just like to, to name the eight girlfriends of uh, Champakalata because it's just so sweet, the names. Uh, Padma Nayana, Sunetra, Kama Dipika, Navanita Priya, Pradipika, Sukarni, Raksan Yukta Venika, mm. and Sukeshi. So Champakalata, she, uh, it's described that her, well, she's two days younger than Srimati Radharani. Her complexion is like a cluster of yellow champak flowers. She's a master of cooking in all six flavors. Uh, she has a special name, actually. She has a nickname. I never heard that before, that the residents of Vrindavan have nicknames. Her nickname is Mishtahashta. Mishtahashta means sweet hands. And she's given that name because she's very expert. Her specialty is making candy for the pleasure of Radha and Krishna. And she serves the divine couple uh, by offering them necklaces. And she's always uh, fanning them with a chamara. When we think this is a spiritual world, it, there should be so many grand activities going on. But it's not so much the activity in Krishna consciousness as the consciousness behind it. Like Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, one can offer me uh, with love a fruit, a flower, or a leaf. Uh, these are small things, but the main, thing, main ingredient in Krishna consciousness is devotion. So when we get back to the spiritual world, it, the life in Vrindavan is very simple, but it's saturated with prema. So all the activities the Braj Bhastis are doing in the village <laughs> is with pure devotion for the Lord. Um, Champaklata is also the leader of the gopis who care for trees, creepers, flowers, and bushes in Vrindavan. She knows where every kind of fruit, flower, and root can be found in Vrindavan's forests. And her particular grove, because each of the sakis, they have their different groves, which they take care of, and where they meet their beloved Krishna. Her, her, her grove is on the banks of Radhakund, and everything there is the color of molten gold. So these are details, but Prabhupada said details a sign of love. And these details are very uh, captivating. That this is why we fall in love with Krishna consciousness, because we have all these beautiful details of the spiritual world. And um, yes, this is her village. So we've come here praying for her, uh, her mercy. Not far from uh, where I'm sitting right now, is the uh, Samadhi Mandir of Bradranab. Bradranab is the great grandson of Krishna, and he was a king actually. He served as king of this area. And uh, after the departure of Lord Krishna, which is not something that Vaishnavas generally like to talk about, but after the Lord's departure from this world back to the uh, spiritual world, we can just imagine the separation that the residents of Vrindavan were feeling for Krishna. Because the nature of Krishna conscious love is that Krishna's devotees, they love Krishna more than anyone's ever been loved before. And that love 
increasing ad infinitum. So when you lose something, you, you feel that separation, the intensity of that separation according to the amount of attachment you had. So we can hardly imagine how the residents of Vrindavan felt when Krishna left. Uh, Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us a little understanding in his Shikshastra compares. O Govinda, feeling your separation, I'm considering a moment to be like 12 years and more, and tears are flowing from my eyes like torrents of rain. So, Brajanab came up with a nice idea because nobody could do anything. They were just devastated. So he came up with the idea, which became an, which is an integral part of our Gaudiya Vaishnav tradition, and that is that he established deities of Krishna and Balaram and also Vrinda Devi in different parts of Vrindavan to mitigate the suffering of the of the Brajbasis, because as we know, the deity of Krishna is not different than Krishna himself. The Brahmin boy who accompanied the elder Brahmin to Vrindavan, um, the elder Brahmin promised in front of the deity that that boy could um, marry his elder daughter, but when he got back to Arissa, he changed his mind. So the Brahmin boy went back to Vrindavan and came before that deity of Shakshi Gopal, the witness deity, and he asked for his help to stand as witness in, in Arissa. So the deity said, but I'm a deity, I can't walk. And the little intelligent Brahman boy said, Lord, if you can talk, you can walk. <laughs> so that way we can understand that the deity is non different than Krishna. And one golden rule in deity worship is that um, we should always remember the deity is a person. So in this way, Bhajanab established different deities uh, around Vrindavan, this is a, and those deities are still being worshipped here in Vrindavan. Some of them, some of them in in Jaipur. One Keshava, he's being worshipped in Kampur. He's still here, five thousand years later. So Bhajanab Samadhi is he, here next to the village of Champaka Lata. When Samadhis are established, they're established in a, in a holy place in Vrindavan, near a temple or near a Lilasnan where something happening. So this uh, samadhi of Brajanabh's, 5,000 years old, it was discovered just a few years ago by one saint, one Mahatma, one devotee. Uh, by historical records, he found it. It's a mystical, actually. And he renovated that area. It was just a little rock there marking it, but he built a beautiful mandir there. And these samadhis are very, very, very important because these, by visiting these samadhis of saints, uh, offering obeisances, circumambulating them, offering prayers and article worships, a sincere devotee can actually receive the mercy of these great souls. We can actually, actually they're present in their samadhis. One time a, a disciple of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, a follower of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he asked if, if um, when we pray to the saints or the acharyas from previous ages, do they hear us? And Bhaktivinoda Thakur's reply was, yes, they hear and they also reciprocate. So these relationships are on the transcendental platform. They're not limited by time and space. Our, our relationships with great saints and previous acharyas. So when we go to the samadhis, we can pray to those devotees and they'll hear our prayers and they'll reciprocate with us. This is so important actually, the samadhis uh, in Vrindavan. They're not graves. They're divine places where we can reveal our heart to the saints and ask for their mercy because, well, that's the process of Krishna consciousness. We don't approach the Lord directly. Krishna says, one who says he's my devotee is not my devotee, but one who's the devotee of my devotee, he's my devotee. So when you come to Vrindavan, we go to the temples, we go to the Leela Stans, but we must also visit the Samadhis. Of course, for Iskand devotees, our favorite Samadhi is the Samadhi of Srila Prabhupada at our Krishna Balarama Mandir. And myself personally, when I come to Vrindavan, I try to come every year, but when I come and then I go, my first stop is Srila Prabhupada Samadhi where I make a report of my yearly, what I've done that year. Uh, my annual report of my devotional service. This is how we 
we keep in touch. So, yes, like this, um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur has stated that there's an intimate connection to remembering our great saints and attaining eternal residence in Vrindavan. Every devotee's desire is to eventually live in Vrindavan eternally. That's where our home is. And remembering the saints um, is integral to achieving that goal. I'll, I'll just read a brief paragraph in Gita Vali, Bhaktivinoda Thakur states, you should all remember Srila Kavikarna Purn and all his family members who are all sincere servants of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. You should also remember the father of Kavikarna Purna, Shivananda Sen. Always remember all those Vaishnavas who strictly follow the path of Sri Rupa Goswami and who are absorbed in bhajan. If you actually want residence in the land of Braja, then you must remember all the Vaishnavas who are followers of Sri Rupa Goswami. So we, we've come here to take darshan of Champakalata, to walk in the dust, the Brajrenu of this holy place, to pray for her mercy. And we've come to this samadhi, the beautiful samadhi of, of, of Brajranab, remembering all the wonderful deities that he established. And we're doing what we do. And this is what we do as Hare Krishna devotees. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smaranam. We hear and chant about Krishna and we remember him and that's particularly potent when we come to the Dham. It's said that the results of one's activities here, uh, devotional activities are magnified a thousand times. So we take advantage and that's particularly too in the, in the month of Karti. Senior devotees are speaking, our Badahari Prabhu is leading us in Kirtan and we're relishing and relishing and relishing and our hope against hope is to one time in the future, one day become a Bajabasi and take our good fortune back to our countries and bring people back to this transcendental abode, this playground of God. Champakalata ki, Brajanab ki, Gaur Bhakti Vrinda ki, Daloka Vrindavan Dham ki, Shri Prabhupada ki, Hare Krishna.
Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Today, our Parikrama party has come to a very special part um, of Vrindavan. We've come to Varshana. Actually, before we walk up the sacred hill of Varshana, we're visiting the village of Chitradevi called Chik Soli. Uh, many devotees know that Srimati Radharani, the Lord's eternal consort, she has uh, a group of girlfriends who assist her in many ways. Uh, they're called Sakis. If you go to Mayapur, our big Mayapur temple, uh, you'll see beautiful Radha Madhava on the altar. And on either side are four assistants of Srimati Radharani, the Sakis. And one of those Sakis is Chitra Devi. The Sakis are around the age of Srimati Radharani. They're you could say nine, ten years of age, and each of those sakis has a group of helpers called manjaris. They're much younger, six or seven, or maybe even younger than that. But um, these are Krishna's girlfriends, and um, each of these eight sakis, they have their villages surrounding Varshana. Varshana is the history of Varshana is very interesting. Actually, it goes way, way back. Actually, it's eternal, but the pastime is such that um, towards the end of Satya Yuga, Lord Brahma was thinking that he'd like to be part of the pastimes of Lord Krishna when he came in his Shwayam Bhagavan, when he it came in his original form at the end of Dipura Yuga. So he was thinking what type of service he could do. He was thinking how he could get mercy from the Lord, from Krishna. So he performed great penances and great austerities to get the boon that um, at the end of the poor yuga when Krishna came, he could be a hill in Vrindavan. Why would someone want to become a hill? We have many spiritual desires. We think, I'd like to be a pujari, I'd like to be a sankirtan devotee, I'd like to be a cook and cook for the Lord and for the devotees. Brahma wanted to be a hill. The reason he wanted to be a hill is because he was thinking, if I'm a hill, then I'll get the mercy of Krishna and Srimati Radharani, the gopis and the cowherd boys. Their soft pink lotus feet will traverse on my head. <laughs> what greater benediction could you want than to have the dust of the feet of devotees or the Lord himself on your head? So he prayed like that and that that desire was fulfilled. This is the beauty of Krishna consciousness. Our material desires may or may not be fulfilled, but our spiritual desires, if they're sincere, in due course of time, the Lord will uh, fulfill them so that we can serve Him to our heart's content. So, in Dipura Yuga, at the end of Dipura Yuga, when Krishna appeared, Brahma became a hill. Specifically, he became, uh, like you could say, there were four, there was the hill, but there were four parts of that hill rises in those, those hills, and one of those rises is called Varshana. And that is the eternal home of King Vishwabhanu and Kirtada Sundari, who are the illustrious parents of Vindavaneshwari Srimati Radharani. They live there in a palace, that family. We know that Radharani was born in Raval, but when Krishna moved from Gokul to Nandagram, when he was a little older, boy, uh, Radharani's parents moved from Raval to Varshana. And the name or the word Varshana has a wonderful meaning. Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur describes it means a, a shower of bliss. Varshana is a constant shower of bliss because of the presence of Srimati Radharani's transcendental form, her attributes, her service, her mood of loving service to Krishna. That place is called Varshana because of that constant flow of bliss. And Radharani has that name as well. Uh, Varshana Rani, the queen of, of, of Varshana. So many of her childhood pastimes took place there. Um, she and her girlfriends would roam the wooded areas around there, um, like young girls do in a playful way. Uh, when they had service to do, to take the milk products from where they were being made, the milk and the cows, they'd take them to the market. Sometimes Krishna would come with his friends and he would stop them and he would tax them, the Dan Gati pastimes. 
We think of Dangati as a place at Govardhan, but there's many Dangati pastimes. It's one of the main pastimes at Vrindavan. That took place all over Varshana. And um, there's a beautiful temple on, on the top of the hill of Varshana. Um, perhaps part of the original palace, you could say, the palace of King Vrishabhano. There's a beautiful deity of Sriji, beautiful deity of Radharani that was found by Narayan Bhatta Goswami, one famous personality who discovered many holy places there. He found that deity is nicely established. So the, the, the majesty of the place and the beauty of the place and the, the mood, the predominating mood of Radharani's Mahabhav is present there. Her mercy is there. She's one of the three personalities who experiences that special Mahabhav. Radharani, Lord Chaitanya, and Madhavinda Puri. So devotees who want to serve Krishna, who want to serve Radha and Krishna, they go to Varshana and they pray to her because she has so much love and devotion for Krishna, the topmost love and devotion for Krishna. She's in charge of devotion. So if we want to serve Krishna, which means with devotion, we pray to her to please accept our devotion and you offer to Krishna or tell Krishna about us one time Prabhupada said, Srimati Radharani is in charge of devotion, so even if she sees her on this earthly planet, one devotee is just joining the temple and wants to serve Krishna. She whispers to Krishna, my dear beloved, there's a devotee on the earth planet or somewhere in the creation who is aspiring for you. Please accept that service. That's how merciful Vrindavaneshwari is. She's so exalted, but she's so compassionate. So we, we're here today at, at Varshana, begging for her mercy to be proper devotees of the Lord, to be trained in devotional service. Actually, we pray like that every day. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. My dear Lord, my dear energy of the Lord, Prabhupada translates that. My dear Radharani, Ladini Shakti. Please engage me in your loving devotional service. So we're starting here today in the village of, of Chitradevi. She's uh, one of Radharani's favorite uh, gopis. She's very artistic. She's a good cook. She's a musician. So many ways she serves. So we're coming to take shelter of her. Servant of the servant of the servant of the servant of Krishna. This is the secret of devotional service. In the material world, you don't want to be any, anybody's servant generally because you get exploited. But in Krishna consciousness we want to be the servant. It's our nature to be the servant. And if we're at the bottom of the pile, we get the most mercy because Vaishnavas are very compassionate. So we're starting here. We'll come back again and again throughout our lives visiting different villages. But you'll see in this video, this is a very, very beautiful village. And our group is full of very many beautiful devotees seeking the mercy of the Lord through the medium of Harikata, Krishna Kata, chanting Hare Krishna, taking prasadam, and walking up the mountain of Varshana to the top and then back down to the bottom where we'll take prasadam, which is the natural course of activities when you come to this abode of bliss. Vrindavaneshwari Shimati Radharani Ki, Shishi Radhasham Sundar Ki, Shirapapad Ki, Gokuldam Ki, Glukadam Ki, back home, back to Godhead Ki. Hare Krishna. Shama Shama Shisha
Hey.